lovely man, Jason Gilgerson. Oh, it is so exciting. Listen to your voices and everything, Jason. Um, we just got a flash there of the weekend group dance that's coming up. Uh, Cuban Fiesta with um, choreographer Matt Flint. Yeah. Hashtag mum crush. He's so lovely. Um, he, he won, so you think he can dance? Like, we yeah, yeah, for him. Did. I love him. Um, I mean, and that looks fantastic. I think it's one of the fastest routines we've done this season so far. It's amazing. And I have to say, Halloween weekend, I mean, both group dances were epic. Yeah. Um, Ghost Train, which Matt um, choreographed yeah. again, brilliant opening to the so show. And fun, then yeah. on Sunday, the results show, Clock Strikes 12. Yeah, with I think Karen and Kevin. The best um, uh, Beth oh. Honan routine I've ever seen on the show. She's I mean, she does Halloween for us every year, but I think yeah. this was exceptional. The storytelling yeah. was, in that short time, to tell this incredible story. And then at the end, it's like, no, I no know, more Karen. I know. <laughs> it was great. And I think Brendan possibly played the best evil character we've ever had on the show. So, <laughs> um, Our wonderful viewers have been sending in some questions for you. This is from Lisbeth. Uh, Evening Lisbeth, who says, How do you choose which pro has to lead the different group dances? Well, because we have so many, it's, it's kind of easy because every pro dancer gets featured in a different routine. So by the end of the season, we've seen every single pro take the lead of one number. And so some of the um, choreographers, like Beth, for example, she knew exactly who she wanted for her routine this time. Yeah. But then, um, you know, I have so many, so I sort of spread it around. Like for my first routine I did, I, I pretty much featured all of them. Yeah. And then for my second routine, I, I kind of wanted to feature some of the new ones that have been in the show this year because no one has sort of got to know the new pros yet. So yeah. I used Gorka and Oksana, of course. This which... was the beautiful Romeo yeah, and Juliet. So, and it was really nice for me because I got to know them really Really well by just working with them so often as well so it was um, it was a lovely experience for me to work with those two and and was this like the sort of one of the first group Argentine yeah we, we've we, ever seen we'd never done that before and I think I couldn't work out why we hadn't used an Argentine tango before for a group number because it's just such a beautiful dance and I think we only get to see it late in the series so it was a good opportunity to have it up you know in week two and week one when you did the waltz oh. to you know when everybody did the waltz to what the world needs yeah. now I mean I it, there were tears I think there were tears in our house it was beautiful and not just in the room but in the rehearsal room it was a really beautiful experience because bringing all these people from all over the country together I mean um, we we had the kids, they were from all over London, and um, the other people that joined us, the social dancers, they were all from up north, so they all bust in on the day, and they hadn't seen each other, they'd been rehearsing all separately, all over the country. And so they only get to rehearse together, actually, on the day? Yeah, so that was uh, quite something to have, it felt like about 5,000 people on the floor at once, it was... It was amazing. It really was. Like, yeah. It's making me all goosebably even, even think about it now. Um, we have more questions from our viewers now. Angela <laughs> would like to know, who are your heroes in the dance world? I think um, I'm a bit old school, so I, I like, you know, Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers, Gene Kelly, you know, Anton de Beck. Yeah. The, the, the biggies, the biggies of the dance world. <laughs> I think, you know, oh. yeah, I love old movies from the 30s and 40s, so yeah. I get a lot of my inspiration from musicals from that era. So We've seen some real beautiful influences throughout this series as well, and Ari doing Singing in the Rain, just, just oh, great. Um, OK, Emily asks, what are the top three elements that make a good dance? Um, good a good dance on Strictly. I think you have to have a really simple concept. Yeah. A good technical base, but the most important thing is then a great performance because that is going to hit at home. Okay. I think if, if you don't have that performance, you're not going to connect with anybody watching. And as much as you can work on technique over and over again, if you don't connect to the, to the musicality and the performance, I think it just it flatlines. Okay. So that would be my three things, but I think performance above everything. OK. I love it when you do the group numbers because you, there's so many different dances yeah. you want to watch as well. OK, with Halloween in the bag, Blackpool is going to be here sooner than we can imagine. Too soon, I think. What <laughs> have you got planned? Do you all always, you know, wow us. I think now that we've got Halloween out of the way, we can really concentrate on Blackpool coming. And I think we're going to go old school glamour <gasps> this year. And I think we haven't done... We've done a waltz so far, we've done a tango. And I think uh, this group number, I think Foxtrot would be a nice way to open the show. And I think I really love getting the celebrities excited about Blackpool. And when they make it to Blackpool, it's a real achievement. So I'd like to do something really special for the celebs this year. We cannot wait. Yeah. We love your work. Your incredible Jason Gilkerson. <laughs> <laughs>